Here's the script in the car world. New car comes out, maybe two, two and a half years. They change the front, they change the back, they gussy some other stuff up. They call that a mid-cycle refresh. Then in four to seven years, we get a whole new car. This off script, because it came out, what, a little less than two years ago, but it only had two doors. This, hate to be Captain Obvious, significantly larger. So that's one reason why we need to drive it. But then there's another reason. Uh, the previous derivations of the 8 Series we drove had two different, very powerful V8s. This, a much smaller engine. Oh, that's not so terrible. It has to work harder than that 523 horsepower coupe that we drove. Not what the numbers suggest. You read up on this, this is a five second car, even with the six. It doesn't feel like a five second car. Interestingly, at speed, there isn't a whole hell of a lot of difference in terms of actual use cases. Uh, passing power, acceleration from like uh, 40 to 60 or anything like that. It's kind of like an old Mercedes in that instance, where once you get it up to speed, they all kind of drive the same. Now, I think all of us would agree that one of the most magical engines on this planet to this day is an inline six from BMW. So why on God's green earth would you cover it with Tupperware when you could show off the engine? So as soon as I got the car, I opened the hood, I pulled off the Tupperware and found this. I mean, look at it. A black sort of plastic valve cover, this rat's nest of plastic here, and then the wires and the plumbing going everywhere. Why not take a page out of Dave Coleman's book? They stole an engine from their pedestrian cars that has Tupperware on it and is ugly, but for the Miata, they put this beautiful aluminum valve cover on it, they polished it, they made the engine look pretty in a sports car. This a BMW, that should look better than, than this. With that, here we go. Oh, there is a delay in that acceleration. Come around this turn here and break. Oh, that's different than what we're used to. Yeah, much longer stopping distance, much longer. Let's try that one again. Uh, accelerate, not as fast this time, and brake. Oh yeah, when you get the speeds higher here, the weight does make a difference. The uh, panic stops significantly longer. I haven't noticed that in a modern day car in a very long time. Uh, I would argue that's, that's the mass going on here. The brake's wonderful track straight, but in terms of stopping distance, not the best we've ever done. Aside from the obvious, what are the differences between a two and a four door BMW 8 Series? Mainly its size, uh, the biggest being the length is increased by nine inches. The wheelbase as part of that is increased by 7.9 inches. It's 2.2 inches taller. And then BMW likes to brag about a 1.2 inch wider rear track. And the reason why they brag is supposedly that is the widest rear track of any BMW they make. Now, what does that translate to, to the most important numbers? Well, if this were a two wheel drive and I really can't remember the last time you and I drove a two-wheel drive BMW. Oh yeah, it was the M2 competition. Everything else has been all-wheel drive. If this were a two-wheel drive and I really did try, I asked for a two-wheel drive, I don't think they have one in the fleet, um, it would be 4,262 pounds. This one, an all-wheel drive, they call it X-Drive, 4,381 pounds. Downshift, get more aggressive around this. Oh, <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of weight there that wants to lean over to that side. It's good. When you consider the length of this vehicle and the weight of this vehicle, it's got some composure, but it's not a normal like BMW sports sedan. It's a luxury sedan with BMW traits. Uh, the weight, there's a lot of pitch, squat, dive and roll when you push very aggressively to the point where you gotta manhandle this thing. But as a basis of comparison, that three chamber air ride in the Panamera, that's more effective than this. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game with today's contestant, for once, a pretty BMW. One that they call a 2020 BMW 840i 
X-Drive Gran, G-R-A-N, no D, Coupe. I don't know about you, I'm confused. Uh, it says Coupe, but it has four doors. Either way, MSRP, $87,800. That's a six-cylinder BMW for almost 90 grand. Anyway, pressing on to the black sapphire paint, which normally I am not a fan of black paints, but when mixed with the stunning Fiona Red two-tone interior with the black Marin extended leather, wow, this is something to behold. I wouldn't want to wash it, but something to behold. And even better, uh, the paint and the interior is free. Then we move on to the things that are considered included. Curiously, the car play for only one year, the panoramic sunroof, very happy with that. And then uh, in a heading of kudos to BMW, the Harman Kardon sound system, normally optional on expensive BMWs and a very good system, that is fitted as standard to the 840i. Now we move on to the fancy and expensive stuff. First stop is the driver's assistance package. That's like the lane keep assist, the driver recorder, the kind of safety doodads, uh, $1,100. Then the driver's assist pro package, uh, that's two things, biggest thing being the extended traffic jam assist. We tried that in an X7, $1,700. Then move on to a package that is very expensive, but very important here because it includes a number of things that make it better to drive. Most importantly, the four wheel steering, $4,850. Uh, then there's the comfort seat. No, that is not the comfort seat we've seen in the seven series where it's got the top of the backrest that moves forward, very, very fancy seat. No, this is cooled seats in the front, heated seats in the back, and a rear sunshade, $1,200. Uh, then the very attractive 20-inch M-spoke or V-spoke bi-color wheels. I'd like to point out, normally it's 18-inch wheels that are fitted as standard to the six cylinders, uh, $1,300. And then there's those glass controls, the buttons on the dash and on the console. They're really attractive. I, I like them. But why are they optional on an almost $90,000 car? Let's keep them, but don't charge me $650 extra dollars. And then there's something that's subjective. I've been very clear, I like wood finishes in cars, even sports cars, uh, especially satin finish. So why would one get piano black when you put one finger on it, you get a fingerprint. And here, you gotta pay $1,080 to clean fingerprints. I don't get it. And then last but not least, the destination charge, which I have to say, this is a bargain compared to some of the destination charge we've seen as of late, as high as almost $3,200 for that Ford GT. Here, to go over the ocean for only $995, vielen Dank. Then we get to the big number. Six cylinder, all wheel drive, BMW with four doors. $100,575. First things first, that's where I, a six-footer, would sit, which translates to some knee room for a six-footer behind a rather attractive seat back, although not a hell of a lot of foot room back here. That said, it is somewhat comfortable back here. I would want the seat to recline a bit. It doesn't do it, so you're a bit too far upright. Uh, there is some storage back here, uh, cup holders, storage here. Most importantly for skiers, notice I don't say snowboarders, uh, skiers, long items go through here. Uh, we did find out in the round of the options game that this is a fancy one. It has a package that has a screen back there, so I can put that screen or shade, whatever you want to call it, up. And then the panoramic sunroof is fitted as standard to these, although in the eight-cylinder versions, one could have the carbon fiber roof fitted there. Uh, it's a 45, 4,600-pound car when you get a V8. Why do you need a lighter roof? I, I don't get it. I would want the glass roof. And that we can open and close here. So it controls it from the back. And then there's two other shades. There's one here and then one over there. So there's a lot of fun to be had back here. And that's not even considering the console, which uh, you speak to BMW, they tell you this is the first time they have the console go all the way through to the back of the car. And that has the HVAC controls, uh, heated seat controls. There's a spacer here, so I don't know what, maybe that's cooled seats. I don't know if that's optional here and then two USB plugs. 
Yes, they call this thing a coupe, but let's go through some more changes that differentiate the coupe and the sedan. Starting with the windscreen, it has less rake. Main reason they do that is to accommodate the larger, longer roof. And moving rearward, the backlight. That has more rake, and they do that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, to accommodate a larger trunk opening. Uh, number two, to make the structural rigidity of these pieces here, the torsional rigidity specifically, stronger. And number three, something for us British car freaks. You see this here, this lip, they call that a flying buttress. Uh, not quite as flying buttressy as the uh, Ford GT we recently drove. But this piece, that fold here, whether it's a six, an eight, or an M8, this is all done by hand. Catnip for Morgan freaks like me. And then the last design detail, the roof, all of these are fitted with a panoramic sunroof. But notice it doesn't have the shark fin antenna you normally see on BMWs. What they did here was bury the multifunction antenna into the roof so it doesn't disturb the longer line that's frankly just more flowing. And I would argue it's one of those things you can't point to and say the car is more attractive because of that, that, or that. But because it isn't there, it definitely makes a difference. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, to me, this is the prettiest BMW that has come along in a very long while, like 20 years. I would argue it's more attractive than the two-door, and that's mainly because of the extra presence of the extra length. That said, there is some confusion in the materials they use to build it. It's a laundry list of exotic materials, like for example, the hood, uh, the front bulkhead, the engine subframe, the doors, the roof and the rear bumper assembly, that's all aluminum. But then the dash, at least behind the dash, that's magnesium. The tunnel for the shaft, the drive shaft, that's carbon fiber reinforced polymer, something we see in a lot of BMWs. And then this trunk lid here, that's a dent resistant plastic. Now, I love me some exotic materials, especially when they come together to make a very attractive vehicle. However, what I don't understand is why is the weight still almost 4,400 pounds for this particular car here?